but the, the next question was really linked to the South and the SDC. Um, and I, Stephen is going to start uh, on this. In the chapter that I wrote on the STC and Iraq, I reached one primary conclusion, namely, as Hadi remained in Riyadh and became more dependent upon Ali Mulsan and Islah allied regiments at Marib, his lack of popularity in the South was increasingly exposed. By May 2017, a faction of the Harak protest movement calling for Southern independence formed the Southern Transition Council or STC inside Aden with help from the UAE, the latter of which wanted to destroy Islah. The UAE also helped the STC pursue its agenda of in independence in a future proposed state of South Arabia while financing military and security forces separate from President Hadi's forces at Marib and inside Aden at the time. This ruptured the Gulf coalition in August 2019 when the STC seized power in Aden and expelled Hadi's government. There are two key lessons to draw from this. The long-term neglect, the first is the long-term neglect of Southern interests by top Yemeni leaders going back to Saleh's rule in the wake of the 1994 civil war led to growing North-South divisions in the country that badly weakened national unity. Second, Different interests between the two main GCC states in the foreign military coalition, namely Saudi Arabia and the UAE, further contributed to divisions inside the country. This was likely by design of the two young Gulf leaders, MBS and MBZ, whose foolish behavior in Yemen undermined the fighting capabilities of their own coalition. The Riyadh agreement was negotiated in the late fall of 2019 after our book was at the printer. The agreement was meant to avoid further fighting in Aden and allow the prime minister and government to return to the southern capital while giving recognition and a share of power to the STC. Thus a new government was formed with payments to STC political leaders for the roles they played running Aden and a few other provinces, as well as payment to STC military and police forces. The new power sharing government was based on a 50-50 division of cabinet seats between the STC and Hadi allies. It took one year for President Hadi to form the new government late last year. In January of this year, when the prime minister and cabinet officials flew back to Aden, their welcome on the airport tarmac included a few missiles fired presumably by Ansarullah forces in Taiz. A few uh, indicators of how the Riyadh agreement and new power sharing government is working or not working. Of course, it has barely been two months since the missile attack at Aden airport which set back the ability of the new government to begin its work. There are some signs of cooperation between Prime Minister Mayin Abdel Malik Saeed and STC leaders. For instance, the governor of Aden, Ahmed Lamlis, who is a top STC leader, is trying to work with Prime Minister Saeed, but there remain problems with the delivery of services in Aden. Lamlis has popular support in the city, but he complains that he cannot improve services without funds. Basic salaries are not being paid. STC leaders generally accuse Hadi and his allies of corruption, and there are indications that Prime Minister Saeed agrees with their complaints. Hadi and his allies in Riyadh want to blame the STC for poor service delivery, but STC leaders say they are glad the blame can now be placed on the full cabinet in Aden. Thus that game that gets played, right? Sharing the blame you know, for popular grievances or public discontent plays both ways in Aden. This is obviously not the basis of good government. The word in Aden is that public discontent and street protests are rising. One sign that the Riyadh agreement will not last was a Guardian editorial at the start of this month 
by president of the STC, Idris El Zubaydi, published after a trip that he made to Moscow. Al Zubaydi renewed calls for a Southern referendum on independence just two months after this new government uh, was formed while asking the Biden administration to recognize the likelihood that the South will form a separate state with Ansar Allah controlling all former Northern lands. I heard some STC officials say that Al Zubaydi was merely floating an idea for Biden's consideration. Yet after his meeting with Russian officials in Moscow, I think it indicates the STC's plan to pursue a separate agenda. Another indication of stress in the Riyadh agreement came from Abiyan two days ago. Hadi's allies in government are using their positions in provinces like Abiyan to buy support for the war effort at Marab. The Hadi allied governor led fundraising efforts to support Marab, calling on citizens to donate their own money and volunteer to go fight Ansar Allah in Marab there were rumblings of disapproval among the population of Zanzibar, the capital of Abiyan, complaining that the governor should not use local funds to support the Northern cause. And I think this is the indication of, you know, why government forces at Marib are so weak. They just simply can't get the support that they need from uh, of, uh, the population in the South. Hadi and his Abiyan allies have been vulnerable to this accusation since the 1994 civil war. Obviously, when President Saleh used uh, Hadi as a kind of fig leaf of Southern representation in the government, and the Southern population did not buy that fact that, that Hadi was representing Southern interests. A few days ago, the deputy governor of Abiyan traveled to Marib with a few people volunteering to fight and others carrying funds to donate. When the deputy returned to Abiyan, there were large protests outside the governor's office. This just happened the last two days, uh, calling for the governor's resignation. Uh, by my estimate, it looked like I saw videos of the protests. It looked like a thousand or more people carrying signs of protest, calling for the governor to resign while waving the old Southern flag. I mean, clearly this is STC. Uh, um, sponsorship of that kind of protest against the Abiyan governor. Look, the STC clearly has a level of popular support in all provinces around Aden in the West, as well as substantial support along the Hadrami coast at Aden. There's also an indication of STC support on the island of Socotra. The STC still receives Emirati support and El Zubaydi and Hani bin Bureik continue to reside in Abu Dhabi. But I think it's a mistake to think that the STC as an organization is entirely constructed by the Emirates. I think there is a basis for STC support, uh, particularly around Aden, but I'm told in Mokalla and the Hadrami Coast, there's substantial support there as well. Thank you, Professor Stephen. I think you laid out uh, the development of, of the Southern grievance very clearly throughout the course of the conflict and, and how the other agreement played out for maybe more relative instability. Uh, you clearly said it is not the foundation for stable governance, which has been quite evident. Uh, as much as there are signs of cooperation, I think the dominant theme is uh, more uh, hard trips to coordinate a team of a team of rivals, and and the developments in 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 Yemen, southern region cannot be disconnected from the earlier session discussion, which is about Marib, mm. and and I think that goes back to to some regional visions. On, on how the conflict sh should move forward, both the uh, joint forces on, on the Tahami coast, as well as the STC and its aligned forces uh, are, are part of the vision that, uh, you know, predicates that the fall of Marib would, would have a peaceful scenario for both the Farah, Saleh, and, and the STC to have some sort of discussions with, uh, with, with, with the Houthis. And, and that goes back to, to, to a point Nadwa mentioned. Uh, there is no clear scenario for
for a peaceful kind of negotiated settlement between this, which means the conflict might only get messier. The formal agencies that we see today representing X and Y Z actors might not be the only ones, and that will have a proliferation of 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 actively engaged entities and disputes on who represents what sort of cause, except for the Houthis, because they have relatively the upper hand right now. And and looking back even before the statement of idols for the Guardian, uh, I think they have made clear that the Riyadh agreement is a transitional kind of arrangement for them. So they never abandoned uh, the secession cause. And, and in fact, uh, there is that one trend I observed from, from uh, the 1990s, uh, the Southern cause itself uh, has been that kind of the wild card for many politicians to climb up the way in, in office. And, and with that political competition among Southern elite, we've seen proliferation uh, of, of arms claiming to represent the Southern cause itself. And, and I think even the popularity of the STC, uh, it might have dwindled in a state of, 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 of being boosted up because now they share power and they have a responsibility alongside uh, political agencies that are presented in the government and with that come responsibility. So no one at this point can say, I'm, I'm not part of this government and I demand it's uh, it's it's uh, restructuring or replacement. Everyone represented bears a share of responsibility, and and that is quite uh, controversial, at least on how these actors frame the debate for the public. Uh, we've seen the issue of salaries coming up again, and it is a legitimate basic concern. But it's again a reflection of limited revenues. Uh, you have dwindling oil prices; they've increased this year. You have contested uh, deposit of, of basic revenues from many governments. And, and I'm unsure about the popularity of the STC itself in, in Al-Mahra. You've had, in fact, uh, more growing anti-Emirati and anti-Saudi sentiment and, and change in leadership between Al-Afar. Uh, and, and then you have the national uh, Salvation Council and, and this disputed representation. In Hadramaut, they might have managed to break the ceiling, but again, Hadramis have their own cause first and then everything else. So there is this layer of unpredictability in the Southern scene that we see today. And with that, I, I think more questions than, than answers to say that the STC has the way to move forward. In fact, at the regional and international levels, I don't see any long, any medium term support for secession, mainly at the Security Council, uh, European counterparts, and, and that hinges mainly on how the political settlement between the primary conflict actors move on uh, to sort of, uh, yeah, bring all grievances to the table and move forward. I leave it there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I, mean, I talked to the STC, been talking a long time. There's, I've never had any doubt that they're there, that they want independence. It's just a matter of looking at the road to opportunity for us. each of these uh, events in Yemen present an opportunity, but that's the direction of travel. And with the Riyadh agreement, Hadi and the STC simply have different objectives. They can't ever, uh, it's very difficult to see it ever being implemented uh, uh, properly. Um, but does anybody else want to comment before we move on? Yes, me. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Steven Brahim, as well, for the comments. I just have a um, few comments uh, concerning the big picture of what's happening in, in, in the South. Um, I think what's happening in the South is kind of parameter for the UAE-Saudi UAE relationship, because um, this is actually since 2015. Um, if there is any sort of strong collaboration between the two countries, uh, it reflected in the South with uh, agreements and, 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 and stability. And if the situation is opposite, the disputes and, and competition um, uh, unfortunately erupted uh, among their aligned uh, proxies or aligned uh, local uh, factions. 
And if we um, look at the Riyadh Agreement, for instance, it was an attempt actually uh, between Saudi Arabia and Emiratis to try to uh, understand or try to, to bring their, their alliance uh, to uh, uh, a sort of, of uh, uh, common understanding. And I tried to bring the STC to the government in order to have this kind of unified front against the Houthis. But at the end of the day, there is, a, I mean, huge division among the two actors. And this is actually what I was expecting from the beginning. There will be huge failure at the end of the day because the SCC is looking for something else and it will work inside the government to look for its own interest. And it links with, with, with another external actors, uh, which has also different agenda than, than Saudi Arabia, of course. Yeah. Uh, the second point related to um, the um, STC itself and the, its relationship with Hadi government, I think we cannot read it as um, a Hadi government became uh, controlled by some political parties. Rather, we need to look into what happened in, 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 in the South. Um, some actually historical um, incidents are reflected actually in this relationship, uh, namely 86 incidents between Zuma, Zumra and Atoma. I mean, Hadi government, uh, Ali Nasser Muhammad, and this yes. party with the other with the other uh, uh, socialist wing. So I think this reflected actually in the uh, 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 battles of Abiyan, and it can clearly seen how yes. these of grievances that are revived again. Yeah. Um, the second point related, uh, the third point related to um, Eden as a central actually um, uh, area in the south, but it's not necessarily reflecting what's happening uh, in, in, in all the south. Today we have Al Mahra and it has yeah. its own yeah. politics. Yeah. People yes. looking at autonomy and Hadramut as well. So I think this is uh, uh, this kind of points need to be uh, taken into account when it comes to how we can understand what's going in the South. I do agree with the points that Ibrahim and, and Ahmed made about uh, the STC's lack of strong support uniformly across the South. I mean, this is, this is clearly the case. People often refer to Al Mahra, but look, Al Mahra is out at the edge, right, of you know, far Eastern Yemen. It simply doesn't have the significance, uh, you know, that places like Hadramaut and Shabwa and Abiyan, Lahaj Adala, you know, around at Aden does. And and obviously in Al Mahra you have, you know, Omani influence there. And and obviously the Omani government has uh, its own role that it's playing in in Yemeni politics. So I, I don't think that's the key point about the role that the STC poses in the current Yemen conflict. Because the central point is the, the presence that it has in and around the city of Aden. I think it's a mistake to gloss over that and say, you know, just because the STC doesn't have uniform support across the country, it can kind of be ignored. I think there's a danger that if you ignore it, right, and if you don't give it, um, you know, presence at the seat of the table, it has a tremendous spoiler role that it can play. But I just think the reality on the ground is that they're going to cause a huge fight in and around Aden um, if they get discarded, you know, and if, if they're pushed to the side. The other thing that I think about the Riyadh Agreement, Noel, is that um, in, in some ways the Riyadh Agreement relieved the STC and Aden. Like they were becoming worried that they were gonna face all of the blame yeah. for the lack of services in Aden. Yeah. And in some way, I mean, I in talking to some of the STC leaders, I almost sense that they're glad that uh, uh, Hadi's government is back in Aden and the prime minister is there so that they can diminish some of the popular grievance against the STC, you know, after they seize yeah. power in Aden in 2019. Yeah. So in some ways, I think it, in, in political terms, I think it worked to the advantage of the STC. Yes, I'll just add, I've met the head of the STC in Al Mahra, and he said it was extremely weak. <laughs> uh, and don't forget so that the, the bulk of population in the South is actually concentrated around Aden. If you look at the, that's where sort of 75% of the, of the population is. So it's always going to be a dominant feature in, in the South, as it was in PDI yeah. days.